What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out the United Kingdom's military rifle, the L85A1, or as I would call it, the SA80, A1, A2, A3 now. Uh, this is by Garand Thumb or Gerand Thumb. I honestly don't know how to pronounce it yet. I watched one of his videos a couple of days ago. Um, I'm not going to react to too many of his videos. I really don't want to be too cheeky and, you know, watch a bunch of his content. I only want to watch this for people who have already looked at his videos, gave him the views and all that lot. And then I'm coming over here just to get my perspective as someone who's used this rifle, as someone who spent time in the Royal Marines Commandos using the SAA tech. I used a bunch of other weapons as well um, that I really enjoyed, uh, like the Marksman rifle. I always go on about it. It was so good, that rifle. And so I just want to get the opinion of someone who obviously is an absolute expert in uh, weaponry, an absolute expert, and he's not biased by being part of the British military, right? Like, I have this kind of, um, how can I say it, like, soft spot for the SA-80, even though it's a terrible rifle, just because it's what I use, it's what I'm trained on, and it's like, I know for a fact I could close my eyes right now, and even though it's been upwards of 10, 12 years, I could literally strip it and everything do you know what i mean like i just know it like the back of my hand and so i have a soft spot for it so i want to see what his opinion is and i know it's not gonna be good <laughs> if you want to watch the video which you totally should without me waffling over the top of it if you want to go over to his channel which you 100 should there is a link down below as there always is at the very start of the video please go over there give it a like subscribe all that good stuff and check out his videos because they are absolutely phenomenal down below, you'll also see links to all the equipment I use to record these videos. Um, they are affiliate links, so if you buy anything through them links, it definitely helps this channel, and I would really appreciate that. Other than that, let's shut up, let's pull this up, and let's see what he's got to... In fact, I'm not going to turn subbies on. You can turn subbies on. It's a long video. It's 23 and a half minutes long. I'm gonna, I'm, you go now. Go and get a cup of tea. Go and get yourself a cup of coffee. You know? Get some pop 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 popcorn. Get whatever it is you need. Get some snacks. Sit down. Relax. Let's watch this. Let's have some fun. And let's see what he's got to say. Police in the world ain't easy. But somebody's got to do it. What was that voice? What was that voice? Is that him trying to like be like freaking Captain Price? Police in the world ain't easy. But somebody's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's a toast. You have a giggle, mate. <laughs> That's what you get, blood. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I know I'm gonna love this video. Splendid. <laughs> Splendid. Stoppage. Stoppage. <laughs> He's got the OG Sue sat on it as well. Oh my god. He's got the plastic front part on it. He's got the OG rail with Sue sat. It's even the original handle, like the cocking handles, not the plastic one that it changed to that had like a bit of a point on it. It's more like the rounded one. At least our schools are the shooting gallery. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Amazing. Oh my God. Turn it down a bit. Stoppage. Oh, mag change. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you have to go all the way back there to do it as well. Stoppage. <laughs> Oh my god. A thing of beauty. A thing of beauty right there. It's a work of art. Yeah, I bet you Brits thought we were done with you after the Revolutionary War. 
Not even close. We have a very special occasion that we have been... All right. Let's get our thoughts into what he's going to say about the rifle. He's going to say that it's got an ungodly amount of stoppages. The cocking handle's in the wrong place. Or you, what is it that you guys... Call, what do they call it? The charge handle? Is that what they call it? Um, what else is he going to say about it? Feels cheap. That's going to be another one. The Susat is dog shit. Let's be honest. Granted permission to do a lot of shooting on this rifle. We won't call it a review per se because it's only about a days of experience and a lot of shooting. But we can give a lot of good opinions being uh, seasoned shooters ourselves. So yes. today on Grantham, I hope you'll join us as we talk about the British military's service rifle and probably the worst service rifle ever made. You won't, mate. <laughs> but before we get started, of course, I have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel. The biggest sponsor of the channel is the... I just want to preface this by saying they are changing the rifle that we have. And how did this rifle... How did it get selected? I don't understand how it got selected. I really don't. Norin Desert Institute. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the people to go to can't thank them enough go and check them out and of course who can we not forget micah primary arms yeah great optics great price we love them everything else you could possibly want go and check them out if you're looking to get better at shooting dry fire is the way to go mantis will turn your gun into a dry fire machine don't forget as well he's saying all these different things here um the link for this video will be down in the description and obviously if you go to his video you can check out all of these different things that he's saying as well okay we are dry firing a lot, right, Micah? Oh, it's so much fun. It makes it fun. It does. And of course, today I have to give a big thank you to AAC. Um, we are sponsored with them. They provide awesome ammo. We are shooting 77 grain today, and it is a performer, no matter what. So we love it. But with all that being said, talk's cheap. So right here, we have the L85A1. It should be noted that there is a upgraded version that is in use within the British military. There's actually two upgraded versions. So it went, f if, he's, if that's the A1, which it is, then it went to the A2 with a few minor upgrades. And then I think right as I was leaving, it officially changed to the A3, but I might be wrong there. Uh, the A2 had the the change at the front that had the Piketty rails on it and extra hand guards and stuff like that. Um, and obviously they changed the rifle, the, the, the SUSAT as well to an ACOG. There was a few little minor changes here and there, which made such a big difference to what is a not a very good rifle at all. But unfortunately for them, we're going to be using the original version. Because nice. why, Micah? It sucks. Just because we we owe you guys some favors from the War of 1812. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with our favorite thing. Me and Micah are going to be running drills with this piece of shit. And we're going to see who is better with this terrible, terrible rifle. Are you excited? No. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we're going to start with the build drill on semi. And uh, it should be noted how off the optic is. Um, that's because the optic requires special tools yeah oh stoppage <laughs> does that does that count no <laughs> two two six i'll take it oh god so i don't think the optic is on at all but i was up there it's two out what is that point one per charlie so that's two four six i am like it now i have never i wish i kind of wish he even had like the iron sight on it, the one with the handle. Like, I wish he had, I wish he could have used that as well because it's, it just gets worse. Do you know what I mean? It gets worse. Got this gun and I hate it. Stand by. I don't know what they're saying. It's a thing uh, of beauty. Four. Good job. His and engineering I guess I just perfection <laughs> with the SA 80. <laughs> So you win. I don't know if it feels good to be good with these kind of guns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're gonna run it really, really fast. Um, we'll uh, we'll try to give it about six rounds, but it will be about keeping it in the A zone. Cool. Stand by. <laughs> I was way off. I don't know if you were or the opposite wow. was. The grouping wasn't bad, but I was certainly off on two, three, four, five, hey, six. Are you using the irons or the scope? Irons. We're using the uh, optic. Yeah. <laughs> Should I just use the irons or the yeah. optic? I use the I use the irons. The irons, I feel like they're there for show. They're one hundred percent there for show. They don't work. Okay. Right. Ah, dude. It's getting hot. Don't touch that. Right where your thumb could go. Don't touch that. Yeah, it's the, that's the same problem the M4 though with the front sight post. Yep. Fuck. <laughs> don't touch the heat shield under there either. 
Yeah. No. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It gets very hot. The M16A1. Nice. Good job. <laughs> I think that, uh, I think the it did get a little bit better when they changed it and had like the Picatinny rail kind of like big metal, um, I don't know what you would call it, front guard thing on it. Uh, but because it was also metal, it did transfer a little bit of that heat. And so it's almost as if you act to have, you had to have the secondary grip on the front as well. The optic is way more on than the irons. I think you're correct. Obviously. The irons are there for show. Oh, no wait, one uses them oh, irons. Yeah. You know what? I guess when you're close enough, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Those are the two to the chest, one to the head. Oh. One, seven, three. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually very good. Yeah, not bad. Switch. Okay, shooter, are you ready? Yeah. Say bye. One, two, eight. I don't understand why you're so good with these shitty guns. It, it's always it's always the gun that doesn't matter, man. It's always these stupid, obscure piles. <laughs> Missed that first one. Give me one do over. Three one six. Oh, oh. I got lost in the optic. Three five. <laughs> Shoot ready. Stand by. Yeah, they changed it pretty quick to the ACOG, which was a, a, a massive upgrade. But I remember when they did it because, like, I was in training when it changed at the end of training. And they were so like, oh, my God, you got you got you got to be super careful with the ACOG. You can't knock it. And it was I, I get it. It's a skull. But like, it's almost as if like we were given a, do you know what I mean? Like a super, super. And it's just an ACOG. An ACOG is kind of standard these days. But at the time, it was like the most prestige thing ever going from the SUSAT to the ACOG. Dude, I got lost in the optic twice, Four, six, so... Five. Yeah. I... Okay, one more time, one more time. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> so once you insert a mag, you can reload several ways. You can either run the charging handle, or you can hit that little guy right there. It's the most awkward... Yeah. Not a reload I've ever done. So what we're gonna do right here is a one round one because that is the basis by which all guns are judged, right, Micah? Yeah. <laughs> but it's just to show you kind of. Although you kind of do get used to just putting it, you, you kind of like grip it and just flick it down. Like you, you kind of get like a a quick use to it. Do you know what I mean? It's not something that I don't know. When you've done it long, when you've done it enough times, it doesn't feel as awkward as what it looks. But at the same time, it's not efficient because it's awkward. Does that make sense? How awkward the by some designer who's never run a mile in their life or should we watch the, let's watch the ad we'll do service and watch the ad was it designed from input from athletes barbell. in tier one military operators because barbell apparel did just that did they now, sell the flannels reason we here on the channel like barbell apparel so much is one it's a lot of stretch take a look at these pants right here especially <laughs> when you conceal carrying all right we'll skip we'll skip the ad we'll skip the ad apparel so we have done a lot of shooting with the L85A1, about 700 rounds at this point, which is a real treat. This isn't a rifle that you get to see every day. I was going to say, it's pretty cool that they actually got their hands on one of these over there and actually gave it a go because I feel like they are a rare commodity outside of the British military, aren't they? So it is really cool for someone who has 
an unbiased opinion on a rifle like this from, you know, a country that don't use it all the time. They barely use it. I've barely even seen it. So it is really cool. United States, especially one that is in the configuration that we have right here. Um, we do have to give credit where credit is due. So the um, both the AN94 and the SA80 that we have out here, the L85A1, are from Maxims from their collection. So a big thank you to them for um, allowing us to borrow them and put rounds on these very priceless weapons because there aren't, as far as I know, a lot of these rifles that are currently in the U.S. Yeah. So very base of them. Thank That's you cool. very much, Maxim. That is really cool. And, uh, let's get into it. And now it's time to do our favorite portion, which... I'd like to know what his jacket is. It kind of looks like uh, the... Is it Fjallraven Schmock? Is it Fjallraven? The Norwegian outdoor company. I've got some of their trousers, the Kev trousers, and they're absolutely fantastic. I'd like to know what jacket he's got there. It's really, it's really cool. Which is talking about it from a shooter's perspective, from a military perspective, uh, more so than the engineering perspective. Mm, um, okay. So my name is Mike. I retired out of Air Force Special Warfare and uh, spent a good amount of time in the military. And now there I just go. do a lot of shooting. And then, of course, we have Micah. Micah, what's the best way you describe yourself? Nerd. Nerd. Gun enthusiast. Gun enthusiast. Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike. Yeah. Counter-Strike shoots better than me a lot of the time. Counter-Strike. So that's the cool thing about our channel. <laughs> but getting into the L85A1, you have to realize that it was plagued with quite a few issues. I don't know if this was so much the problem of the design to some extent, as it was the problems with the QC um, mm. where it was made. And this is pretty unfortunate because I think that there were, it, it could have come out of the gate doing a lot better. Yeah, I think the upgrades that they did genuinely made it a better rifle. They really did. Like the ACOG and the front grip and, and, and the various other little tiny pieces, they genuinely made a good difference. Um, but at that point, you're kind of polishing a turd. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you're not going to get... Um, as much benefit out as if they they just started with a better rifle in general and that's the complete honesty with it and i'm excited to see how well this new rifle is that they're getting um actually goes and i wish i got to use that when i was in but you have to realize that when it came out at the time it came out the m16a2 had already been out for a year or two and had already been adopted by the united states military so when we talk about like reliabilities of, of, of a service weapon and being you know well tuned with 556 five, that had already been accomplished not just in the m16 but multiple others so when the british came onto the scene with the l85a1 and it finally made it into soldiers hands it was certainly a disappointment in many ways mm. it's not all bad um i do have to note that when the um, l85a2 came out which was basically an upgrade from hk which was british owned um the weapon performed much better and that's yeah. more than likely due to the fact that the tolerances were much better. The QC was much better. And essentially, the entire rifle was gutted except for the receiver. In fact, I think the what I'm talking about with the ACOG in the front of it was actually considered part of the A3. Because when I got into the military, there was the A2, and we still had the plastic guard. So it must have been all internal. And I'm, I'm almost certain that it got renamed A3 once it officially had all them extra parts in it that we just adopted throughout time. Do you get what I'm saying? So like we got new upgrades every now and again for the rifle. And then at some point it must've just been like, all right, now it's an A3, even though we already had most of the parts. And uh, you had a much better rifle at that point. Um, as far as my experience with this rifle in practical terms, I spent a lot of time working with the British military. Um, th the guys know who they are out there. Um, so I, I got to talk to a lot of people about the L85 A2 mostly, not the A1. Yeah. But you guys certainly have your opinions on it. In any <laughs> case, let's go ahead. Let's get into it. We're going to start tip to butt, just like my my Royal Marines love. And we're going to start with flash <laughs> hydro. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Oh, my God. This is slowly becoming... I've watched two videos of this channel so far, and it's becoming one of my favorite channels. It really is. Right here. The Flash Hider is very <laughs> uh, very much so like the M16A1, which was a full-spectrum birdcage Flash Hider, which means it's not... There's nothing... On the M16A2, if you take a look at this Flash Hider, you can see that it has... Um, it's blocked off for the ports at the bottom. That way, you don't kick up as much dirt when you're firing. Um, that's not so much the case with the LA5A1. This isn't a bad design per se. It's just a design choice. It does a good job at flash suppression. It is longer than the typical A2 birdcage flash hider and performs very well in my opinion. When it comes to the L85 as a whole weapon, we do of course have a bullpup. What this means is that we're able to get more barrel length 
despite it being a shorter weapon. So both the M16 and the L85 have the same barrel length, but as you can see, yeah. the L85 is quite a bit shorter than the yeah. M16 um, A2 right here. So it's quite impressive. I do like having the magazine behind your main grip. It's something, and I, I guarantee this is just strictly because I have been used to using the SA80. And that's literally it. I got my hands on it at 16 years old when I went into the Royal Marines. And because of that, I have a preference for the magazine being at the back here. Whether that's ergonomically better through engineering and, and you know, the ergonomics of being able to reload quicker, I don't know. But I think just out of personal preference, because I had that for the longest time, it's probably why I enjoy it the most. Why this is important is the M4 is a very similar size to the L85. But the fragmentation range of 5.56 out of the M4 is much shorter than what you get out of, out of the L85. Now, there, are, of course, are problems with having a bullpup. The action being closer to your ear means that it's louder at the shooter's ear. Um, some ergonomic problems and weight distribution problems, especially during full auto fire. But there's always a trade-off. That's another thing as well. We never really used it on full auto. It was very, very rare we put it onto full auto. It was always semi. And the British decided that they really wanted to have a bullpup rifle. So moving from the barrel, it is a very, um, from what I've seen, accurate rifle. We weren't able to test that as well. And that came down to a problem with, we didn't have the correct tools in order to properly zero this older optic. I would say that accuracy wise, like it was pretty decent. Like when we were on the ranges, we were getting some pretty long distance shots off with it. I mean, it's nothing amazing. And then you had like the LSW version that had the bipod legs on it, which was just absolutely dreadful. But you could you could get some distant range on it. It's not like some decent range on it. It wasn't like it was, you know, absolutely dog shit in that department. That's not a dig against the rifle or the optic. It's just um, those tools are somewhere in, in the United Kingdom. God knows where. But if you have them, send them to us. From talking to soldiers who served in the British military, they have noted that the weapon is accurate. And from everything that I've heard, it's slightly less accurate than the AR-15, anywhere from 1.5 to 2 MOA um, from the factory. And then from there, um, of course, you have your uh, about 4 MOA before it's retired out of service or barrels change, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So good on the barrel. Moving back to the handguard, this is where a lot of problems with the L85A1 kind of came into play. Um, the plastic that they use um, had a problem with the insect repellent that was used in the British military. So it ended up melting from that uh, insect repellent. So that's super unfortunate, of course. Oh, weird. Um, for the I actually didn't know anything about that. Composition of the plastic that they use, the composite material. But another problem was that this kind of top plate right here. Um, it, it's Do you know what? Getting that frigging top plate off when it was carbon, like when there was carbon built up, was almost impossible. You would rip your fingers getting that fucking thing off. It was an absolute nightmare. It's really easy for this to come loose, so a lot of guys ended up... You say that, it. you say that, but I swear to God, some of the rifles we used, it was almost impossible to get off. Down, you can see why. That would definitely be frustrating to have that happen in the field. Um, so that's definitely something that um, frustrated me as I was shooting, because if it caught on gear as I was doing yeah. switching positions, that ended up catching. And that's kind of a... What's the best way to say it? It's kind of a theme that you're going to see throughout the L85A1 that there's these little things that just kind of irk you about the rifle as you're kind of working it, as you're shooting. I do want to mention as well, this um, small part here to be able to um, make ready the weapon. I'm pretty sure it's on the other side as well on the A2. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Is it on the other side as well? Holy shit. Let me, let me get an image up real quick. No, it's not. Why did I? Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, you're right. It's not. It's not. I'm looking at the other side of the rifle. Just on images. This is what it ended up looking like right here. It says A1VA2, but this is what people were saying that it started to become the A3 in a way. A3. SA80A3. I wonder if it's like officially being called the A3 now. Because by the time it finished, it pretty much looked like looked like that. You know, this new kind of front part with all the Picatinis. We had an ACOG sight on the top. Yeah. 
Very interesting. Is it still considered the A2, though? Did it never officially turn into the A3? That's the handle as well. I didn't even like that, to be fair, that front handle on that. I thought that was dog shit as well, to be honest with you. But it also was way better than just that, you know, that initial plastic frigging front guard on it. These little bipod legs that come out the front very rarely actually come out before they break. Very interesting. Anyways, let's pull this back up. Seeing it as you're going through it. So we do have a sling mount point right there. Um, no issues there, actually. It's a great mounting point, much like the M4. Moving back, Why I do did have I think to say, that was on the other side? Though, my favorite thing about the L85A1 is how cool it looks. It, like, I remember seeing this in, like, Call of Duty back in the day, and, like, the heat guard, the, um, in the stamped sheet metal, these holes. It just looks cool as hell. I... I think it's one of the cooler looking bullpups out there. Do you agree with me, Micah? I think no. I could agree with that. I Micah think just hates this rifle. So I think can't. it does look like a, a relative. It looks like a relatively decent rifle. Like if if it was a good rifle, I guarantee people will be commenting on how much it, how well, how good it looks. More, I almost guarantee that that's the case. If it was a good rifle, like utility wise, I think that people would compliment it more on its looks than anything else. I really do, or more than what people do now. We're not gonna. We're gonna pretend he doesn't exist. The colors on him are really now, cool as well. Now back from there because we have a bullpup. Um, we're gonna be slightly out of order, but we do have the fire control group. Now, when it comes to bullpups, um, something that a bullpup does suffer from is a worse trigger compared to a more conventional weapon. That comes mm. down to the fact that on a conventional weapon like an AR-15, there's not a whole lot of engagement that has to be released in order to release a hammer. On a bullpup, because the bolt is all the way back here that hammer yeah. has to be all the way back there that means this trigger has to have a bar that's traveling all the way back longer bar just means you're gonna have to exert more force the bullpup triggers are typically more gritty longer they just feel worse and people say a trigger doesn't matter i highly disagree with that i think a good trigger mm -hmm. is a godsend for a shooter um people will probably disagree with me but as long as I've i know i agree with as many that. rounds as i've shot i found that the more i shoot the more i appreciate a good trigger <laughs> So, with all that being said, let's go ahead and let's try the trigger out right here. Okay, going into it, we have about three millimeters of play. Pushing into it, about five, six, about six pound pull. Let's feel that reset. Coming forward about three, four, five, six, seven, seven millimeters. Uh, that's a long reset on that guy. From the reset, good let off about four pounds. Not it's so it's so interesting to see like an actual expert go over this rifle that I've used literally forever. Do you know what I mean? Well, I used it for, for the amount of time I was in the Marines, but you get what I'm saying. Like it felt like I used it forever. Herbal bullpup trigger. There are of course better ones out there. Um, I it think did the change. Has an exceptional uh, trigger for a military rifle that is a bullpup, but this is certainly miles better than the Styrog which is still to date the worst trigger on a bullpup I've ever felt. So not bad for my British military guys. The safety is right here, right above the trigger. So press in for safety. So when you're holding this weapon, this is a right-handed weapon. If you need to disengage that safety, it's with trigger finger and then you're on your trigger. Mm. Um, being an AR-15 guy, um, of course, I love being able to kind of have my trigger ready and prepped um, and be able to flip, flick off the safety with my thumb on the opposite side. So I don't like um, using my trigger finger to disengage the safety. I do understand that for a military force, it is uh, a better safety protocol and proceed. I, I, I agree on both sides there. I do think it is a better safety protocol to have your finger off the trigger to take off the safety. Is that effective if you need to get rounds down ASAP? No, it's definitely not. But... Um, if you think about it, you are taking your finger off the trigger to turn the safety on. And so there is that extra, extra little bit of moment for you to be able to think before you get rounds down. Again, I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's something that is going to help you when it comes to time. And at some, sometimes I, I don't think that time is necessarily that big of an indication. Like how many times you've got like milliseconds difference like in Afghan, there was the the distance of shooting was actually pretty far unless you were in room. So I don't know. I, again, that might be just my personal preference. Out of I'm super uber, keep things as safe as possible, and so I kind of like the fact that it's your finger that has to take, it has to come off the trigger to turn that safety on. But I also 
definitely understand the opinion of I want to keep my finger on the trigger type of thing. But um, I'm not going to specifically dock the rifle for that. That's yeah. certainly just a manual of arms thing. That's just me personally as a shooter, what I don't like I about respect it. that. But the grip angle is fine. Um, moving back into the action, the one thing I do have to say about the L85A1 is that um, I was really surprised at how <clears throat> smooth the bolt rides inside the rifle. It. I hope you can kind of see that or or feel that. It. It's an exceptionally smooth rifle. And you really have to give it to them um, for how good that feels. A lot of rifles, when you when you cycle them, when you rack them, you can feel a lot of grit, um, like the Styrog and stuff. It doesn't feel good to cycle. The L85 does. What I know you say that, but when you've dragged it through some mud, <laughs> it really doesn't feel as smooth as you'd think. I remember uh, we have to do our endurance course with the rifle on our back and then shoot it after it to make sure we haven't got it gritty. And I remember pulling it back and it was a bit like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the rounds down. It feels kind of rough. It comes to its recoil. <laughs> um, it's very much so Sire Og-like. It's not incredible. And that's due to the fact that so much of your weight is kind of back that your muzzle has more of a tendency to rise. I understand this is, you know, there's always pluses and minuses to bull pups. I don't prefer it. I don't like the weight all the way back there. But so when you fire, it definitely does jump a little bit more than an AR-15. That being said, um, if that's a trade-off that you're okay with, then it's not that big of a deal. When it comes to select fire on this guy, um, I do find that it's um, it's not terrible, obviously, but it certainly has more recoil than many other 5.56 weapons out there. You can really feel that bolt kind of chattering as you're... Yeah, and 5.56 isn't a big round either, so to get some big recoil on this weapon, then it's obviously got its issues, hasn't it, in that sense? Um, on auto on this guy. Not my favorite thing. Semi-auto is acceptable. So it, <laughs> the best way I could describe it is it's a bullpup. It, it, it's a little bit clunky when you're kind of firing it in semi and, and in auto. It's not the best experience, although you do have a very compact rifle. Now, moving back from there, we do have... I honestly would love to get his opinion if you stripped the rifle down and saw the inside of it as well. I'd love his opinion on that. The magazine release. This is a big pet peeve of mine right here. So the magazine Massive release button. is really not that protected at all. Uh, and it's a, it can be incredibly stiff as well. That button can be incredibly stiff to get a magazine out, which is not a vibe. Um, and what can happen is it can. And push sorry, I, I don't mean to keep pressing, I keep pausing it. It is an absolute nightmare to clean that button. Like you can't pull any of the innards of that button specifically off, and so it gets if it gets grit in there, you're in there forever to try and get it out and cleaned. Up against your gear, up against magazines, and release. And this is a big complaint from the uh, British military folks. Mm. Of course, with the advent of the 82A1, um, this is no longer an issue. So the magazine release is just weird. The, kind of the whole manual of arms when it comes to reloading is a little bit weird. It is. I understand kind of what they're doing. The idea being that you have your locked in there you have your bolt release right here and i don't think i can get Down. it with uh without a bullet in there but the idea being that you know you mag you're gonna rip that mag out you put your mag in and then either you're going to reach up and hit that or reach back and hit that charging handle or reach over or press it up so for us it was always tilt it to the side and go over and do it or at least it was in training because when you were starting to get you know when you got outside of training and stuff you would certainly like use your hand that is on the trigger and pull it back like i've seen a lot of people do that i never got into that preference more for me it was tilting and using like the classic way but i have seen people kind of adopt different ways to to be a little bit more efficient whatever have you it's just kind of odd on a lot of bull pups usually end up having the bolt release somewhere back here because that way when you get that mag in you can just hit that bolt release and get moving mm. i think that's a better position after having run many bull pups I understand that the L85A1 is an older design, but that being said, we're still gonna dock it. It's just a very odd manual of arms when it comes to the L85A1. From mm -hmm. the magazine going back, we do have the selector switch. This isn't uncommon to have a separate safety and selector. Um, a lot of my AR-15 guys are so used to safe fire auto, but on many rifles, it's safe fire up by the trigger group, and then you select the firing position um, at some other location. So right here, we have do you see how stiff it was for him to move that then you're getting that with a lot of different like parts of this this rifle you get it with a lot of different parts our select fire and then up there we have our semi um i think it's intuitive i do like the location it's certainly not something you're going to be changing that i'm still trying to just think yeah so this here this little part here 
Am I remembering this correct? Oh my god, it's been like what twelve years since I was in the Royal Marines. The 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 yeah. So you could use this little button here to bring to make ready as well. After you've pulled back the bolt to bring it back forward again, you can use this part here. It looks like a little square, a little circle. I guess it looks like in the video. You can use that as well quickly, but um, I really don't have a whole lot of issue here. I do have the issue with the cheek pad right here. It's very well known that these crack very easily. And in fact, while we we're shooting, it did crack. I do understand that this is an older rifle and you know, there's plastic has a finite. So look. you can see that there, you push that down and it'll bring the cocking out. That's why I thought that that other thing was on the other side. No, you can use that as well. Life. But that being said, it was known to crack in many different environments. Same thing goes for the butt sock as well. Again, all these upgrades that were done by HK ended up fixing this, mm. but I'm going to take the moment to really kind of go hard on the rifle that when it kind of entered service, it could have avoided a lot of this with a little bit of QC and a little bit more on the soldier trial side to ensure that this didn't happen. If, and if we're not being honest about these things, then, you know, history is going to repeat itself. But moving back from there. Let me, let me get a quick picture up so you can see that a bit better. Because I feel like it's uh, not as... He's not mentioned it, and I'm wondering if it's even usable on his rifle. So here is what looks like a very, very clean version. There's like a little square here. That can be used. So you're, you've ran out of rounds. You've got a stoppage, whatever. You're cocking it back. You're changing the magazine. You can click that down on this. So you're on the inside of your weapon, and that's what makes it ready as well. And so I don't know why he's not used that there or whether the A1 maybe didn't have that. I don't know um, because it certainly was when I was in training. From the entire rifle, we do have the optic. Um, I understand that the optic is kind of a pain in the ass nowadays. But I'm wondering if it even it works on his rifle cool for some reason. Very forward thinking. Uh, it is very Elkan like. In fact, I believe it was a predecessor to the Elkan. And the uh, reticle is very thick. That being said, uh, that was true of many reticles back then. I think it was a good thing overall, especially compared to many of the other service rifles that you had out there at the time. You have iron sights on the top. Um, it, the eye relief is not great on this optic. It's the SUSAT, S-U-S-A-T. Let me see right here. Yeah, so it, it's not great, mm. but for the time, good. I, I didn't like that scope in any way. I thought it was dreadful. Overall, the L85A1, um, Definitely not my favorite shooting experience. Definitely yeah. not my favorite rifle. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to say the worst service rifle. Um, I was just being dramatic there at the beginning. Um, but a service rifle that could have avoided a lot of the problems by simply putting this rifle through better trials. I think this is a weapon He's not that wrong. you get good with. It can be very effective and deadly. The earlier, earlier teething issues weren't due to the design so much as they were due to just poor QC. And this is what I was saying about how the A2 is a decent rifle. It is much better than what our, what I would consider now the A3, right, when it had all the upgrades, I think was a decent rifle and it actually works really well. But, but it would have been much, much better if we didn't have to make them upgrades in the first place. And if it started with a better rifle, that's my thought process with it. So overall, a good service rifle, a good military rifle, especially after the upgrades from HK. And uh, really don't have a whole lot of problems with it other than I have to give the uh, British guys a hard time about it because Got it. <laughs> you guys had to, kind of a rough go at the very beginning there. But here's the thing, guys. <laughs> if you're training with this rifle, you're going to be good with it. You're going to get deadly with it. Yeah. I've seen, you know, tons of different British military guys just absolutely crush these rifles. So get out there, train, get hands-on time with these types of rifles and you're absolutely going to do a great job and you're going to rock. That's the thing. Like I trained on this thing so quick, like so much that it really does become second nature. Like even me thinking about then about pushing the, the guts forward, like I had to think about it. And the way that I had to think about it is by doing it with my hands. And even though it's been upwards of 10 years, like that's how I remembered. No, there is something on that side for you to do. Like, it, and then I, did it, I couldn't even think of it because I, it got to the point where you don't think about it, you just do it. And so when you do train some so well on something, even if the rifle itself isn't considered very good, if you get lethal with it, you're going to be lethal anyway. And I can definitely tell you that's what the Royal Marines was like. Like we trained dry drills like it was unreal. The amount of dry drills we trained before we even got on the range was absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. And so when we got on the range, we were lethal with this weapon. 
Again, I don't think it's that good of a weapon. I really don't. And the, the marksman rifle, which I'll show you after this, what I got trained on, I thought was absolutely fantastic. Guys, thank you so much for uh, Great video. with us. We've got to review a lot of different cool, interesting rifles in the SA-80. The L85A1 is definitely one of those. Thank you for tuning in, and we got nothing else for you guys. Dad advice for today. Don't discipline your kids out of anger. Discipline with a cool head. Let them know what the problem was and correct with love. Thanks, guys. Talk to That's soon. actually really good advice. <laughs> Great video. Absolutely fantastic video. The weapon I keep telling you about, the Marksman Rifle, what is it? The L129A1 Sharpshooter Rifle. This is the rifle that I eventually got trained on and genuinely absolutely loved it. Um, and I think it is an absolutely fantastic rifle. I really, really, really like that rifle a lot and uh, much preferred it over the SA-80. I really did. Um, but that's a conversation for another day. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Absolutely fantastic video. It is... This guy's channel is becoming one of my favorites. It really is. His comedy is on point. You know, he, he doesn't take things too serious, but he also has a good uh, level head when it comes to being reasonable and understanding. The SA-80, it's just... <sighs> it's one of them where when you're good with it, you're good with it. But at the end of the day, like I said, if that initial variant of the rifle before it came the a2 and potentially a3 I can, someone's gonna have to tell me did it officially become the a3 or did it just keep adopting different changes because i heard that it officially became the a3 just after i left or just before i left uh but i might be wrong there i just think that if it was a better standard rifle at the very start then we could have got something really really special and now they have to fork out a lot of money to upgrade and change the rifle i do get at the same time that it's been a long time and we are upgrading the rifle now uh let me What's it called? The new one. The KS-1. This new KS-1 rifle. Let me pull this up. I would love to have shot this. This new thing. It's really, really cool. I would have absolutely loved to have shot that. I really would have. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'll leave a link to the original video down there. Links to all my stuff's down there as always. Let me know if you have any recommendations for my next videos. And until next time, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.